Polinaire once said, Picasso is the heir to all the great artists, and having suddenly awakened to life, he sets out in a direction that none has taken before him. He changes course, retraces his steps, sets out again more boldly, growing in stature every moment, drawing strength from his contact with the mysteries of nature or from comparison with his peers of the past. In his work, talent is multiplied by willpower and patience, and every experience helps to liberate art. Hello, this is David Heine, and today we're in the Kunsthalle in Rotterdam for the very large Picasso show. With us today is Wim Pipus, the curator. He's going to give us some insights about Picasso, I mean, the protein artist of the 20th century. Wim, uh, could you tell me, how does a show of this size come together? That's a lot of work. It, it are a lot of works, and uh, all together. It takes months, years uh, to get all the paintings, all the works on paper, all the ceramics and all the other things uh, together. And it's a great show indeed. Could you tell me, um, how is the show divided and, and what parts are there? Yeah, we have uh, in the Kunsthal divided the, the show in, well, three parts. Ceramics, uh, paintings, which is the nucleus, the, the, the most important part in a way and downstairs uh, an enormous room with a dimmed lighting for all the works on paper. So the watercolors, the prints, uh, all the other graphic works. In, to, uh, in total there are about 400 uh, pieces. And the dividing of the, of the paintings themselves, uh, how have you done that? Yeah, well the problem with uh, the work of Picasso is that there are so many that uh, you have to, to introduce it to the audience and uh, you can do that uh, in different ways uh, on a chronological order or by themes or another way we decided to, to, uh, to make five themes the first part is uh, still lives, the second part is women another theme is uh, imitation and inspiration and another theme is family and children and the last theme is, and that's where we're sitting now, is uh, the artist and his studio. So the self-portraits and Picasso in his studio. Now when you think of Picasso, you really think of the giant of the 20th century. Here we are at the end of the millennium. How is Picasso holding up? Um, I think he's uh, by far uh, the, the best and the most well-known artist of this century, so that's why we called this exhibition uh, Picasso, Artist of the Century. And why do you think that is? Um, for several reasons. Uh, first reason might be that he, 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 well, he has dominated the whole art history of, the, of this century. He died in 73 and, and worked through this period. I mean, three quarters of this century he, he was alive and he was producing works of art, many works of art. And that's the second reason, uh, many works of art of very high quality. He um, kicked the, the art history in new directions. So cubism, the collage technique, uh, the ceramics, all the graphic techniques he, he developed. So for his invention, for his artistic uh, power, well, to me, and not only for me, but he is really the, the artist of the century. And you see people here at the show today from all walks of life. Why do you think Picasso appeals outside that small circle of art appreciators? Um, again, for several reasons. Uh, first place, uh, I think the, the high quality of the works themselves. But for the second reason, um, the, the life of Picasso is very well known. I mean, everybody knows about the money, uh, about the women, about his glamorous uh, attitude uh, to life. And, yeah, his face is well known. I mean, he's, he, he photographs of Picasso are are very well known. Photographs by Brassai or Lee Miller or, or Robert Capa. I mean, he, the, the man itself is well, in a way, uh, as important as as his works. You find Picassos in almost every museum in the world. Now, you've gathered together different periods here, haven't you? Yeah, we. Uh, the oldest works on the show are uh, the late period in, in Spain, so 1899, and the most modern piece on the exhibition is 1972, so one year before he, he, he passed away. 
and uh, yeah, in total about 400 works, works from all his different periods, and that's uh, yeah, that's that's enormous. Holland is a land of painters, really, yeah. isn't it? Um, what period of Picasso's development do you think had the most effect on 20th century Dutch art? Uh, I think Cubism. I see the, 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 the influence Cubist uh, painting had on, let's say, Mondrian. That's, that's, uh, it it, it makes Mondrian work in a, a complete new way. So the influence that, that the Cubist style of Picasso had on Dutch painting was, I think, by far the most important. Now, there have been other exhibitions of Picasso in Holland. Um, I think 1939 there was a large one. Actually, it was first exhibited here, I think, in 1910, wasn't it? Yeah, or something? 1911. 1911. And um, how does this show compare? Uh, well, there are only a few exhibitions on Picasso held in, in, in the Netherlands. And the last great uh, retrospective was in 1967. So that's uh, 32 years ago. And at the same time, we have only in the museums about 14 paintings by Picasso divided in five different collections so the relationship uh, Picasso in Holland is only very thin and very incidental um, so that was for us as a Kunsthal an extra reason to put this show together. Now the Kunsthal has a, a special function it's not really a museum no. how, how does it work? Uh, we work as, a, as, an, as an exhibition space for temporary exhibitions, art exhibitions like this Picasso show, but at the same time we have exhibitions on ethnographic uh, subjects or design or children or, well, uh, any object that is, uh, yeah, culture. So this show from Picasso, uh, how many people do you expect uh, to come here? Um, 100,000 and a lot, of more, a lot more. We, 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 don't, we don't know yet. I mean, we just started. Uh, the, the exhibition is running for a week now, and uh, the first week was very successful. We had a, rec uh, a record for the, for the opening week, about 23,000 people, which is a lot. And uh, yeah, but, but visitors' numbers will, are depending on many things. I mean, the weather, uh, other exhibitions somewhere else. And so I think, yeah, a lot of people will come, and yeah, I hope 150,000, 160, something like that. Picasso is a, um, an enigma in many ways. Uh, his paintings oftentimes are termed almost parodies of themselves by the later period of time. I notice you have a lot of paintings from the 50s and the 60s. How do you think that period compares, let's say, to the 30s and the 40s? Uh, yeah, I think one of the interesting things on this exhibition is that there are uh, many paintings from the 50s and even the late 60s. And I think that then Picasso is in his 80s. I mean, he's really an old man, but of high stat uh, stature, of course. But um, yeah, for us, I mean, we've seen now that the Mulheim of Freiheit and, and the, the new way of painting, the, the Baselitz and, and, and all the other new young painters. Um, I think Picasso, with, with, with his uh, expressionist way of painting, um, even at his, at his late uh, stage in, 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 in the 60s, he is still uh, very uh, energetic and very, uh, very, very uh, renewing the thing and, and, and pushing art history into new directions. I mean, the, the late Picasso in, is in a way very interesting and in a way can tell a lot of, of new, uh, a, a new way to look at art. And if you, if you look for Baselitz, for instance, um, and then see the old works by Picasso. I mean, it's very nice and very interesting to compare the two. I mean, Baselitz, a person in his 40s, and Picasso in his 80s. I don't know if, if Baselitz is still as, as good as Picasso is at his 80s, but uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to compare the, the, these kind of things. So for a private exhibit like you, yeah. uh, uh, exhibit hall itself, when you borrow these paintings, I suppose. Um, do they come from museums, private collections? Both. Um, the wor works by Picasso are, uh, a lot of them are in museum collections, but I think an even uh, the same number of Picasso works are in private collections. Uh, the family have some, uh, the art dealers have some, uh, and it's, yeah, it's spread all over the world. And uh, so these paintings here are uh, taken together from collections, private and museums all over the world. Now, Picasso's 
paper works are not really as well known as his paintings. You don't see them as often, but, but of course they are, he was prolific in that area too. Would you describe uh, your exhibit of that for me? Um, yeah, we have, we have downstairs uh, a main hall with about 250 works of paper, starting with uh, the most famous etching, Le Repas Frugel, from 1901, so blue periods to the latest uh, watercolors 1972, which is expressionist style. And on these works of paper, that's uh, hang in a, in a chronological order, you can really see the development and the variety and, and the quality, the high quality of, of Picasso as an inventor, as a, as a, as a person who is constantly uh, renewing itself. Although he's, he's permanently taking the same subjects. I mean, it's always, things you can remember. It's never completely abstract. There's always the still life, there's always the self-portrait, there's always uh, uh, a, a women portrait. There are still the classical themes from art history. He's still using that at the same time, all, all the way through this whole uh, artistic uh, period. And that's, yeah, that's interesting to see it in one exhibition on a row together. You also have, <coughs> excuse me, you also have uh, a series of ceramics that you're presenting. People are not as familiar with uh, Picasso's ceramics, although he was very prolific in this area too. Would you uh, give us a little insight into that? Yeah, well, the, 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 I, was to the, I went to the exhibition in the Royal Academy, uh, um, Picasso, a sculptor in clay. Uh, I, I don't know the exact title, but that, w that was a great show and, and put all the, all the ceramics together. And you can see the same... Um, the same uh, quality in his paintings, he also can be seen in, 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 in ceramics. I mean, the same uh, childish approach of, of making a portrait, uh, the, the naive way of, of, of depicting things, he's doing that with, with, with paint or with a pencil, but in the same way in clay, he's doing it like that, and it's a terrific quality and it's immediately at the same time it's a Picasso I mean that that's that's the magic of, of this man and for that reason I uh, I put also uh, some ceramics just not to make a ceramic show on Picasso because we only have 60 pieces which is not so, well it's 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 a good number but not it's not complete but um, it gives uh, an impression of the of the of the quality and the diversity diversity of of, of the techniques that is uh, Picasso uh, has been used. Well, it's, it's certainly a beautiful show, and uh, you've got uh, a crowd that I can see. So you've got to be proud of getting it all together here. How long is this show going to be running? Uh, we started half March, and it's running till uh, the fourth of July. Well, that gives everybody a good opportunity to get out here. Vim, thank you very much for being with us today. What's my pleasure. Picasso once said, the great majority of people have no spirit of creation or invention. So how do you go about teaching them something that is new? By mixing what they know with what they don't know. Then when they see vaguely something that they recognize, they think, ah, I know that. And then it's just one more step to, ah, I know the whole thing. And their mind thrusts forward into the unknown.
Goeiedag. Dit is Mister. U heeft in dit eerste uur op de dinsdagmiddag weer wat programma's gezien van Aspect Productions. Dat zijn David en Elliot Heijnen die samen deze producties doen, vader en zoon. Ze doen het in het Engels en heel langzamerhand, dat merkt u ook in het Nederlands, want ze stellen dan de vraag in het Engels en krijgen Nederlands antwoorden. David Heijnen is een Amerikaan, zijn zoon dus ook, die ik tegen het lijf liep in Amsterdam, waar hij aan het leuren was met een productie.